Hello and welcome to History Matters, where we explore the fascinating past of our species. In this episode, we will talk about one of the most important technological advances in human evolution, the control of fire and cooking. Fire is a powerful force of nature that can destroy or create. It can provide warmth, light, protection, and a way to transform raw materials into useful tools and food. The answer is not so simple because the control of fire was a gradual process that involved several stages and different hominid species. Hominids are the group of primates that includes humans and our extinct relatives such as Australopithecus, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Neanderthals, and others. The first stage was a change in habitat from dense forests where wildfires were common to savannas where wildfires were more intense and frequent. This change may have occurred about 3 million years ago when the climate became cooler and drier in East Africa. Some hominids, such as Australopithecus afarensis, adapted to this new environment by becoming more bipedal and expanding their diet to include more plant foods. The second stage involved interaction with burned landscapes and foraging in the wake of wildfires. Many animals do this today, such as chimpanzees, vervet monkeys, and some birds, because they can find more food resources and less predators in burned areas. Some hominids, such as Homo habilis, may have also exploited this strategy about two million years ago. They had larger brains and more complex tools than Australopithecus, and they may have also scavenged meat from animal carcasses. The third stage was to make some use of residual hot spots spots that occur in the wake of wildfires. For example, placing undercooked foods on a hot spot to finish cooking them, or pulling foods out of the fire if they were in danger of getting burned. This would have improved the taste and digestibility of some foods, especially meat and tubers. Some researchers suggest that this stage may have started with Homo habilis or Homo erectus about 1.8 million years ago. The fourth stage was to transport fire from one place to another using natural carriers, such as branches or animal dung. This would have allowed hominids to keep fire alive for longer periods and use it in different locations. This stage may have also started with Homo erectus about 1 million years ago. The fifth and final stage was to create fire from scratch using artificial means, such as rubbing sticks or striking stones. This would have given hominids complete control over fire and its benefits. This stage is the most controversial and difficult to prove because it requires finding clear evidence of intentional fire making. The oldest evidence of fire use by hominids comes from Africa and dates back to more than one million years ago. For example, at Wonderwork Cave in South Africa 1, archaeologists found charred bones and plant remains that suggest hominids hominids used fire to cook food there. The most likely candidates for this feat are Homo erectus or Homo ergaster, who were the first hominids to leave Africa and colonize other continents. However, the oldest evidence of fire making by hominids comes from Europe and dates back to less than 500,000 years ago. For example, at Pech de L.A.'s IV in France too, archaeologists found flint tools that were burned in fires that were deliberately started by Neanderthals, who were the cousins of modern humans. Neanderthals were able to manipulate fire well before they came into contact with Homo sapiens, but starting fire was an entirely different matter. So why did it take so long for hominids to master fire making? And why did it happen? happen in Europe rather than Africa. There are several possible explanations for this puzzle. One is that fire making was not a single invention that spread quickly and easily among hominids, but a complex skill that required cultural transmission and learning. Fire making may have been invented independently by different hominid groups at different times and places, depending on their environmental conditions and social interactions. Another is that fire making was not a necessity for survival, but a luxury for comfort. Hominids may have been able to survive without fire in warmer climates like Africa, but they may another is that fire making was not a necessity for survival, but a luxury for comfort. Hominids may have been able to survive without fire in warmer climates like Africa, but they may have needed it more in colder climates like Europe. Fire making may have been a response to environmental challenges and opportunities rather than a driving force of evolution. A third explanation is that fire making was not a universal trait of all hominids, but a variable one that depended on individual and group preferences and abilities. Some hominids may have been more interested and skilled in fire making than others, and some may have lost or abandoned this skill over time. Fire making may have been a matter of choice and chance rather than a fixed and inevitable feature of human nature. Whatever the case, the control of fire and cooking was a major milestone in human history that had profound effects on our biology, culture, and society. 
Fire and cooking allowed us to expand our diet, increase our energy intake, reduce our chewing time, grow our brains, improve our health, extend our day, enhance our communication, create new tools, modify our environment, and express our creativity. Fire and cooking also brought us new dangers and responsibilities. Fire can cause injuries, accidents, and conflicts. Cooking can alter the nutritional value and safety of some foods. Fire and cooking require constant attention and maintenance. They also raise ethical and moral questions about our relationship with other living beings and the natural world. Fire and cooking are not just technologies, but symbols of what makes us human. They reflect our intelligence, curiosity, innovation, cooperation, and culture. They also show our vulnerability, dependence, variability, and adaptability. They are part of our past, present, and future. Thank you for watching this episode of History Matters. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to leave your comments and questions below. See you next time.